Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Happy Saturday. Hope everybody is doing great. Welcome to another uh, edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. If you are brand new to the channel, thank you very much again to spending a few moments with us to kind of go through uh, the markets, kind of get, share my thoughts of what I believe is happening, where the market potentially can go, and always do it in a very unbiased, uh, most important adult uh, and professional way. All we ask is uh, like, right? Just like the video. If you're watching it, it takes a second. Like the video, subscribe if you're not uh, so already, and share if you feel uh, it can give uh, somebody more uh, value. So let's talk about the market, right? So going back three weeks ago, okay, uh, when the market was in a pretty aggressive sell-off, and again, not going through the levels. If you've been watching this broadcast, you kind of know uh, every single level that we talked about um, you know, confirmed, went to the next level, so forth and so on. And around, you know, around here, which which was the October 26 lows, all you hear, you know, all you saw was the market is in turmoil. The market is the worst. The market, the market, the market, the market. This isn't the worst. This will never, market will never go up again. And at the same time, in October uh, the 26, the QQQs were still up 29.6% for the year, Right. So the worst market of all time was still up nearly 30% after a pretty aggressive sell-off from the top of the channel from the October the 12 highs. So let's keep this in mind, that October 12 level, which we talked about uh, for the last couple of days. And just so we talk about it all the time, this is what happened uh, kind of during, and I don't, I don't want to compare the same, uh, I don't want to compare the, the, the time zones, but when you go back into history, right, uh, in the mortgage mess from 2007 and 2009, Around 2009, uh, people were just saying, well, what's going to get this market ever to go up again? Okay, this is the absolute worst thing ever. And that's the cool thing about it. Okay, eventually sellers get tired. They just do. Eventually sellers get tired in the same way uh, during the dot-com era when the market was just going through the roof every single day, the buyers got tired. Sellers got tired around uh, 2009. And just like that, we put in a generational bottom. We literally put in a generational bottom and then we rallied uh, basically for the next uh, 11 years. I mean, that's pretty amazing to the two, two, 2020 uh, pandemic. So the, the coolest thing about the tape is it doesn't have to make sense. We kind of reiterate this point every single day. Uh, you don't need to rationalize it. Stop trying to guess. Stop trying to uh, analyze what you think the macroeconomic view versus the, the trading view is about. Again, the market has nothing to do. I know it sounds weird. The market has nothing to do with Main Street America. Again, you tell, if you told me in 2020, we're going to be logged down for, for a month, right? You think the market would go to zero. We were all time highs, uh, only 30, 45 days later. So you got to be, you got to be very, you know, you got to be very open-minded about this business and just realize, Hey, you know what? You're not going to figure it out. You don't need to figure it out. Just try to figure out where technically the market potentially could go next, whether it's long, short or distribution, but that's your goal. And if you're a brand new, if you're absolutely brand new to, um, uh, technical analysis, again, you could quite, you know, you could really, really see, uh, what they talk about a V bottom, right? This wasn't a U bottom. This was a V bottom. This was literally, uh, a, a, an area that the market stopped. There was actually no technical reason why, uh, it stopped. It stopped literally, uh, shy of the 200 day moving average and just sellers got gassed out. And once we, uh, reclaim the 50-day moving average, that big area we talk about, that 364 level, everything changed, right? All you got to do is go back into, just go back to videos from, uh, what, a, a week ago, a week and a half ago, that we talked about, you know, the 50-day moving average is the birth of the trend. And we're getting that trend. We're getting a phenomenal, phenomenal move. Um, you know, year to date, you know, year to date, this market was just going absolutely nuts. I, I checked the figures this morning. Year to date, the Qs are up 42.1%. One year, they're up nearly 34%. That's staggering. That's absolutely staggering. Uh, the earnings are coming in, you know, pretty mixed. You know, you have some really great earnings uh, winners this year, uh, this quarter, excuse me, uh, you know, names like Microsoft, names like Amazon, right? They're, they're, they're really, they're doing really, really well. Uh, AMD, 
uh, had a, a great quarter and it's rallying as well. All the semiconductors, if you look at the SMHs, right? Semiconductors are going nuts, but the point is leadership is continuing to build this momentum and continuing to build this momentum into a holiday traditional, right? It doesn't happen every single year, but a, a going to a holiday traditional bullish stage, you can really feel the energy of the market. You can really feel the dynamics. So even, uh, even this week, and again, let's kind of talk about some levels, right? If you watched uh, the video, you know, for the last, you know, just in the last three, four days, we talked about big levels, right? Uh, we talked about potential rejection uh, off this initial 373, uh, 70s, 374 level. We got that, right? We got that rejection. We got a nice pullback uh, into the five-day moving average, and the bears had an opportunity to make this a multi-day uh, back test, and they didn't do it. You know, the bulls held the five-day moving average, and the level that we talked about, I think it was on Tuesday's video or Monday's video, that pregnant pause where we got initially rejected, right? That pregnant pause I talked about. Well, the bulls finally reclaimed that on Friday. They reclaimed back uh, that big level and just absolutely exploded. And, you know, here we are, right? And, and if you look at the monthly charts, right? Look at the monthly charts. You know, Friday, you know, the NASDAQ went up 2%. Huge move, right? That went up 400, you know, 400 points. But if you look at now the monthly, right? And this is kind of where you start looking at the potential big picture, especially uh, if you're an investor, you start realizing that, hey, we're not that far anymore from all-time highs, right? The next big level that the Qs need to reclaim is this 388 level. Granted, it's still 10 points away, uh, but look at the monthly view, right? This is the monthly view, and if they could reclaim back the 388 level, then we're going back to 400, right? That 408.71 is all-time highs. And look at the correlation between uh, the strong leaders. Look at Microsoft, guys. We're all-time highs on Microsoft, right? This is definitely top three most important uh, stock uh, in the NASDAQ 100. You know, look at a name, for example, like, uh, look at a name, for example, like Apple. Again, these are the leaders, okay? Apple just broke a monthly, right? This is, if, if when you, you just look at the five-day moving average, this is the monthly version of the five-day moving average. This is the first close of a monthly bar of 171, right? 171. This is a big, big deal. So you have a lot of room now to all-time highs. The question is, can the bulls continue, right? That's the only question. Can the bulls continue? Um, you know, is this a scenario that uh, we potentially can get gassed out? And I, listen, I, I think the bulls did a great job from Thursday's uh, back test. Like I said, I think the bears... Uh, they dropped the ball. They fumbled it. They could have literally the next day, Friday, confirmed the five-day moving average. We would have had an, a very efficient back test uh, back to the 50-day, but it, they didn't do that. And that's a major, major thing. Uh, going into this week, you have uh, CPI numbers, right? You got CPI numbers, another read in inflation. And by the way, keep this in mind, right? This is a you know, great point. This is why Wall Street and Main Street disconnects, right? This is all happening, right? This is all happening as inflation is still through the roof, right? Keep this in mind. This is a big, big deal. So this is the whole point of why you don't need to worry about what makes sense or what's, what's rational or irrational. The market is always going to be disconnected sometimes from reality. And when you look at the next big levels here, the cues, the next you know, area for the bears to try to you know, fight them off is going to be this uh, 383, you know, 81 level. That's that's the next supply zone. That correlates basically uh, with the September September one highs of a 3840. And if you look at the Bollinger Band, it kind of correlates pretty nicely here. Uh, that's that 380.50s level. So that's basically where the next uh, mini battle will take place. Is there a possibility there's a little bit of a, of a break in that 380 and a half level? Yeah, probably. Because again, if you look at the Bollinger Bands, that's where stocks get stopped, right? You see right here, you could tell July 19th, they hit the Bollinger Band reverse. Uh, right here, uh, September the 1st, hit the Bollinger Band reversed. Here is October the 12th, we hit the Bollinger Band reverse. So the next area, potential area that the bears, uh, if you are in that game of trying to pick a top, uh, or at least a tradable uh, soft landing re rejection or soft top rejection, it's going to be somewhere around that three, 380 and a half, 381 level uh, to take a short position if you feel and if you believe these Bollinger Bands hold. And again, you can clearly see it uh, with your eyes. So bulls look like a 380 and a half uh, magnet. If you want to take, uh, if you want to try for a day trade uh, to get a potential short position in that 380 and a half, 381 level, you could using the high of days, you stop. 
But right now, the bulls look uh, incredibly strong uh, and very, very aggressive. And again, all you need to do is look at the individual names. Uh, in the video, we talked about, you know, you know we talked about from the 50-day moving average, there was a potential NVIDIA could get to 370, uh, uh, 470, it was a 377, 477, excuse me, uh, 477 before earnings. Yeah, they got that. And they also went all, all the way to 485, right? I mean, so the, the video keeps on going higher. Now, you know, you're seeing a report on the 21st of November. They're, they're coming for the 505 calls. They're like bypassing the 490s, the 495s. They're coming for the 500, 505 calls. Again, the euphoria is real, right? The euphoria is real. Uh, and the market is uh, definitely fueling the fire uh, to people who are still trying to guess uh, where a top is. At least on the queues, we had a tradable top that we talked about, right? On Tuesday's video that we traded off and it got rejected. That was at least an area. So again, if you are going to trade uh, the QQQs into a potential tradable pause, right? Another tradable pregnant pause, it's going to be in that 380, uh, three, excuse me, 380 and a half, uh, 381 level. Until then, you want to continue uh, to buy dips. Any weak open, you know, bulls are still trapping bears. It's the most amazing thing. We keep on talking about it from the 50-day moving average um, that as soon as that we reclaim that every dip needs to be bought into rise of support. That's why these stocks continually to take, put on uh, higher highs and higher lows because it traps, they're cheap on trapping shorts that are anticipating, oh, this is it. This is the top. The market will finally go down. So a uh, very, very aggressive market. Um, you know, the, the, the hardest part about this tape is trying to find stocks that are not overextended, right? I mean, it, it, again, everybody doesn't want to miss that euphoric train ride and NVIDIA and Microsoft, and they're going crazy, right? I mean, we, we talked about Meta a couple of days ago that it's finally coming out of a range. I mean, look a little bit Meta bit. Man, look what look Meta did on Friday. Finally came out of that range, just absolutely exploded. I, I like Meta. If this, mar you know, if this market continues, you know, as much as Meta went all, from all the way down to 379 to 330 in only like a, you know, two weeks, there is a point of reference of, of those 10, 12 highs that eventually, if it tests and the market keeps on going, this looks ready to rumble. Uh, Starbucks is consolidating really nicely. Uh, after its earnings, you know, watch this thing for the next couple of days. Maybe this thing starts waking up as well. Uh, DDOG had a really nice quarter, right? Really nice quarter, put in a big move. Now it's going sideways. Keep an eye on this thing for the next leg up. Uh, look at the home builders, right? Everybody's talking about the market's going to crash 8% interest rate. Look at, Lenar, look at Lenar, right? Look at Lenar. Lenar looks phenomenal. Lenar had a huge move, is going sideways now. If Lenar starts building back up, uh, this thing could could run off, you know, run away as well. Uh, the only one, it, it, amazing to say, the only one who is not participating has been Tesla. I, I, Tesla has been a phenomenal short in the last three days. Uh, as much as the market is going crazy, the last t t uh, 24 hours on Tesla has been phenomenal. We caught this uh, 415 breakdown. The stock went all the way down to 206. We took it overnight on, on, on the close. Uh, Pre-market, we're covering the stock down in the 206s. Uh, then the stock started rallying. We had a sneaky entry, green to red, took out 208, and this damn thing went all the way down to 205. There is something wrong with this. I'm going to get I think CIBC uh, made some negative comments on this thing, but you know, th this is what really shows you that individual process is much more important than, uh, than where the directional market is going. You can definitely find uh, stocks that you trade on a daily basis that are completely disconnected uh, from reality, um, you know, what, what the, the funniest thing is, you know, you saw the big headline or maybe you didn't see the big headline, but there was a headline after the close on Friday. Uh, and that is Moody's cuts U.S. outlook to negative citing deficits or and political uh, polarization. OK, whatever. Right. If this was three weeks ago. The Nasdaq 100 would be down one, one and a half percent after the close. The Qs are down 30 percent, 30 cents after the close. 30 cents, that's it. Uh, you know, sometimes the market sentiment is going to be more important than the actual news. News is important, of course. Uh, news is important, uh, but the key is how the market perceives the news and how price action moves on the news. And, you know, you saw the the, the reaction for this uh, Moody's cut in the U.S. outlook, the negative, uh, a 30 cent, uh, a 30 cent uh, decline after hours on the queues after an eight and a half dollar move in the regular session. So the market continues to be good. How long is this gonna last? We'll see.
take it day by day. Um, I always say, uh, you know, again, I, I don't know where the market's going to be a week from now, a month from now. Um, I take it day by day, the symbols that we just talked about. Uh, I'm definitely interested in going into this week, the metas of the world, um, you know, metas of the world, the, the Lenars of the world. They look very, very interesting as well. Uh, but the key is, again, just take a breath, okay? Don't try to anticipate, don't guess. If you've been watching this broadcast, you see how methodical, um, you know, methodical I approach the markets day to day. It's level by level. And if a level gets rejected, well, the market's going to go lower. If the market starts reclaiming that level, yeah, that's the whole point of technical analysis. It doesn't, you don't need to guess. If we were, you know, if this was a guessing business, I would be, you know, I'd be sweeping floors somewhere. You know, I wouldn't be doing this because... Uh, it, you know, again, if things go 50-50. It's like betting, you know, betting a basketball game money line. One team's going to win and one team's going to lose. So guessing is not trading, it's guessing. That's the whole point. Uh, so going into this week, guys, uh, continue to be diligent. Just always be aware of overextended names. And again, there's a lot of overextended names, but they just keep on going. Try to take those overextended names into weakness. That's where the biggest value is because if they continue to hold the bottom range, they do trap and they continue... Uh, to go higher. We'll see. We'll see. L uh, earnings for this week. Uh, let me just look at some of the earnings. I know NVIDIA uh, reports reports on the 21st. So you have Monday, you have um, nobody really big. Monday, nobody really big. Tuesday, you got Home Depot. Oh, we're running out of names here. Home Depot. Doo -doo -doo. Wednesday, you got Pan W, Cisco, Target, uh, TJ Maxx. Uh, Thursday, you got Walmart, Alibaba, Amat, uh, Williams, Sonoma. Yeah, we're running out. I, in the next week, the next week will be uh, a lot bigger, uh, a lot bigger as well. You got Zoom for the f next following Monday, and Tuesday is going to be the the big one, uh, right? It's going to be the big one. It's going to be Nvidia after this hundred point run up in the last two weeks. We'll see what happens there. But anyway, guys, have a great, great weekend. Get some rest. Uh, it is. Uh, Saturday mornings around quarter to 11. Again, I don't know when you guys will be watching the video or when, when the video is going to be out, but hopefully you guys continue to mature, continue to get better, continue to be better human beings, continue to be uh, more, uh, more um, better understanding, more empathetic people. And that's the most important part. Health, happiness, and kindness will never go out of style. Guys, God bless. Have a great weekend, and I will see you all on Monday. Take care.